Well, put simply, if more people uh, come to the UK, then that means they uh, demand more things, and that means the government gets more tax receipts, which you can choose to spend wisely or not. But it's a bit more than that, because if immigrants have skills that are in short supply, then that means that the economy can be more productive, and that means there's sort of a bigger pie to share around. Um, it also helps the immigrants themselves, because by and large they're better off coming, uh, coming to the UK than they were in, if they stayed uh, in their origin countries. Uh, but it's, it's one thing to sort of theorise about this, but we also need evidence to sort of back these up. So these are, these are potential benefits of immigration, but you always need evidence to see whether that's true or not. Well, there are potentially downsides to immigration because people worry that if there are more people uh, coming to the UK, then that means more competition for jobs. And that could, in theory, put downward pressure on, on wages or, or raise unemployment. But people also worry that more people means more competition for scarce resources like education or health or housing. Uh, there's even fears that immigration could, you know, stoke uh, rising crime. So there are, and there's also congestion that people worry about. It just, you know, it just becomes a bit more crowded. So there are, in theory, there are lots of things that people worry about about immigration. But we need evidence to uh, to say whether this is uh, old or not. Well, we think that both of those things have had a, a, have an effect. Um, in, in truth, it's a bit difficult to disentangle the two effects, but I think, put simply, um, Brexit stopped people coming in, and Covid sent a lot more people out. So, if you think about it, uh, Brexit sort of affected immigration, and Covid affected emigration. Um, Brexit means it's harder, for, particularly from the European Union, to, uh, to, to, to find work. Um, because free movement stopped, whereas uh, the COVID downturn is more about sort of um, everything shut and therefore we, sit, we think that lots of people went home. Though that is rather tentative at the moment because the, the evidence um, understandably is a bit uncertain because of COVID. But we think that that's what happened and we think that you know, something like between 700,000 and 1 million people may have um, left in the uh, last year, which is a big number. It's a big number. Well, to answer that, you've got to ask yourself, well, what happened to the economy when immigration went up? And to the best of our knowledge, the answer is not much. Um, immigration seems to have small positive effects, but they're all, they are small. But neither does it have the big negative effects that everybody was worried about. So then equally, if, if immigration is falling, uh, you might say reasonably, well, OK, uh, if immigration didn't affect much when it went up, it shouldn't affect much if it goes down. But then things get slightly more complicated because it's not, uh, economists like to talk about other things equal and things are probably not equal the same as going up as when immigration was going down. So it's very difficult to say what the um, consequences of falling immigration will be. Certainly certain sectors will be short, the shortage of labour, um, but other than that, anybody who tells you they know for certain what's going to happen is probably, uh, uh, well, you know, optimistic.